I was watching a video on ideas to come and she got me motivated in wanting to use my Cricut again. <laughs> it's been a while. I've gotten in a bad habit of not using it and I really have no reason why not to because I can use my machine as a standalone. It doesn't require my computer and um you know, I I want to always <laughs> the reason why I say that is because my computer is really it's a very old computer. I really need to replace it and and I don't like to use my laptop very much at all if I can at if possible <laughs> avoid it. But anyway, um, so I was watching her video, and she was doing, she started a Cricut series for beginners. And um, I commented on her video that maybe I should make a video because um, I think it's kind of neat to see uh, the process, different things that you've learned as you're working on a project. So, um, of course, she told me to, <laughs> you know, let her know if I do one, so I will definitely let Heather know that I'm making a video. I told her, I kind of laughed, I said, well, mine would be more of the rendition of an I Love Lucy episode because, you know, with me, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> so, um, anyway, what I'm working on is a project life. Um, I'm very far behind on my project life as far as for this year. And so what I decided is I'm going to focus on right now as far as current pictures, we just had our um, family trip to Chicago visiting my relatives and I want to get all those documented and um, put into my project life and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep uh, moving forward and and documenting my pictures you know and keep up to date with those and then go back on what I'm behind on from the past couple months I'll go back and, and play a little bit of catch up here and there, try to document a little bit. So um, so I, I hope my uh, project life doesn't make you too dizzy, but you probably you wouldn't even really notice anyway, unless I told you if I was behind, you would think it was something current anyway. <laughs> but um, so I may, I'll probably have to do what I'm going to work on now. I may have to do it in steps because I don't have the the setup for doing the real time or the speeding up videos and all that so um, this is real life here <laughs> and um, and a lot of what I learn is trial and error and help from other people on YouTube and I'm so uh, thankful for that that uh, there are so many people out there that are willing to help so one of the first things I thought I would share um, as I said I was starting for my project life I decided that um, I was going to I decided on my headline banner that I needed to spell out Chicago or I was going to use the words Chi Town, which is short for Chicago. Of course, it's a nickname for Chicago <laughs> um, because I should have brought my layout for my project life, what I'm working on. But um, in the heading space that I have, uh, I wanted to use some thickers, but I don't have very many thickers and all of my thickers, the what I do have just does not go well with what I have laid out so um, I thought this was a great opportunity to warm up my Cricut and get it fired up again so as you see I have my Cricut in the background and the cartridge that I chose to use for this project is the Plantin school book and what I want to use is um, in this cartridge set there is a Besides the alphabet, there is also a cityscape. I don't know if you can make that out very good. You can see the the skyline of the city. And so I kind of wanted to cut that out and use that in the background of my title for Chicago. So that is going to be my next step. And I just wanted to show you real quick, um, for those that are learning how to do their settings for their um, Cricut. I printed this off. There was a kind lady, and I cannot remember who did it. I don't know, because um, I printed this off several several um, months ago. Printed it out, and it's meant to 
so that way you can tape it inside your lid but if you pause on it you can look at it and maybe write down these measurements she um, spent a lot of time writing down according to if you have um, thin, like if you're using thin cardstock, your blade would be at a four, your speed would be at a four high, and your pressure would be at three. I'm sorry that my paper got wet on the corner. Um, for regular cardstock, your um, blade would be at a five, your speed would be at a five max, and then your pressure would be at five max. So, um, and then I'll just hold this if you want to pause and look at it at the settings accordingly. Oops, sorry. And you can jot those down if you want. Just pause this and you can write them down. But um, see, I made a note on for this pattern paper. I used the, this was a setting that I used for the coordinations. And so, um, you know, find what works for you and record them. Write them down so that way when you go back to a project, you can find, figure out what works the best. Keep in mind no two machines are the same. I had a Create and then this pink expression and what I would use on my Cricut um, Create, the settings would, some, would be different than on this pink expression. And um, even from, even if it's the same model, your settings can vary. So. Um, trial and error, make sure when you find something that works for you, write it down that that is the good, a good setting for that particular paper that you used. I am not a fan of the thin paper. It causes way too much headache and frustration and <laughs> I got tickled at um, when I was watching Ideas to Come for her beginner video, she was commenting about how, those mats, how tacky they are and um, how people would put their hands on it and and um, try to remove some of that stickiness. <laughs> and when I first got this pink expression, I was so excited I couldn't stand waiting. I wanted to make something so bad and, and see it cut. So I was overly excited. And when I put your mat comes with the peel off film, and I peeled that mat off, and I got a um, heavy piece of cardstock, and I put it on there, and I ripped it off. And I put it on there, and I ripped it off, and I did, I, I, I may have done the hand thing too, putting my hands on there. And silly me made the mistake of using some paper that I just wanted to get rid of, because I just wanted to use, I didn't want to waste my good paper, so I used some old, some really old, thin pattern paper that I didn't care, you know, about throwing it away or whatever. Oh my goodness, was that a mistake. <laughs> I could not, I could barely get that, <laughs> that paper off that mat. I mean, it was stuck down there like a, I don't know if you've ever seen a mouse glue board or not, but it was, it was down there. So I went through great lengths and efforts trying to remove that paper. So that's trial and error, learning the hard way. And, you know, I've, I heard warnings on that and I still turned around and did it. So we all do it. Um. But this mat that I that you see here is one of my older mats. I actually have a newer one, and um, I thought I would show you. I'm going to use this piece of paper for doing my lettering. So, in my lighting in here, I'm not in, at my craft table. I don't have a real good lamp set up at this counter just yet. But um, so I thought I would go ahead and put that on there. But I just wanted to show you. See on your mat. Two, there is an arrow where it tells you where to direct where to insert your mat into your machine. It does not matter. Even though it shows you to insert at this end, you can insert it at this end. You can't, you cannot insert it sideways, but you can insert it at either end. And so I tend to rotate mine so that way my mat will wear evenly. And so I have my paper. Um, at the opposite end where my mat is going to insert actually into my machine at the opposite end of the mat. And so um, always make sure you pull your your um, Cricut out far enough so you have plenty of wall space and um, 
I love that. Voila! <laughs> I know I'm silly. Um, and then, as I'm sure you've heard many people mention before, turn your machine off in between before you change out your car carpet. <laughs> okay. See, I told you you never know what to expect with your cartridge. And your overlay. I'll go ahead and turn it on. I love that sound. So this, um, so it's telling me I have that cartridge in. This particular paper is on the thin side, so I have to be careful for my settings. I'm going to look back at that little sheet and um, adjust my settings and um, I will be back with you. I just thought I would share with you too real quick. Um, I was looking on here for my settings but um, I thought I would uh, tell you a thing that I had learned and of course um, if you're not getting good cuts and your paper is wanting to rip a lot no matter what your settings are more than likely you need to change your blade and I fell uh, into that problem because I was starting to get kind of frustrated and I thought you know what I haven't changed my blade in a while so I changed my blade and it cut perfectly after that so I ha that's one thing that you have to be mindful make sure you change your blade and I'm not really sure you know how often what to tell you as far as that you know uh, there may be somebody that has a um, kind of a guideline that you can go by and I know that that uh, they tell you certain guidelines how many sheets of paper but who really keeps track of how many sheets of paper they're cutting out and this and that so but um, I thought I would share with you another tip that I had learned is sometimes when you make cuts especially with the um, pattern paper like I'm getting ready to use it will drag and it will some and when that happens it can get caught on your blade so that will prevent it from making nice clean cuts as well so sometimes before I start, I go ahead and remove this blade housing and I push this button at the top of it and you can see the blade kind of pop out a little bit. I don't remove the blade, but I kind of look it over and um, see if there's any paper on the tip of that blade that needs to be removed. So uh, mine looks good. So I'm going to put it back in there. and. Um, I decided, and then, I can't show you, what, I wish I had a better setup for the camera, so you could see, <laughs> but um, I'm going to show you real quick, I have to watch my time here, um, when you insert your blade housing, make sure that little black arrow is always facing towards you, because otherwise it will mess up your cut the way the blade will line up and you have to make sure that that is to the outside facing you. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my settings. I, I know I'm going to put my blade at a 4 and I'm not sure about the speed and the pressure but I will get all of that set up and then I'm going to come back to you in another video and cut out my paper. So thanks for watching this far.